Yesterday we had an interesting discussion about what constitutes an event. Right. Something happens. So normally people would say an event is just a change in time. So if two billiard balls collide, it's because one minute they were some, time, some distance apart, the next minute they're close. Why is that definition not good enough? Like, why do we need to ask a more complicated question? Uh, there, there are a few reasons on, on uh, trying to generalize that uh, definition of an event. Uh, one of those is the fact that one of the driving forces behind the effort for quantum gravity has been a space-time independent description of physics and of reality. So whenever we connect a new concept that we are trying to define to space or time, then we are kind of failing on our hope of having a space-time independent definition of that concept. And, and that goes uh, uh, true for, for the event as well that we are trying to define. Uh, the other reason is if quantum uh, field theory or, or quantum theory in general is at this stage our best theory for describing the universe at, at extreme energies or, or extreme distances, then we would like to be able to uh, describe an event in configuration space rather than in space-time. Uh, usually there is not a one-to-one uh, -one mapping between a quantum process and the classical process. Um, in, in fact, the, the quantum set of events or processes is much larger than their classical counterparts. So what's a configuration space? Can you? Uh, a configuration space is, is a space of quantum fields, for example, or a space of quantum operators such as a quantum momenta, etc. Et uh, when, when, for example, uh, studying the origin of the universe in, in terms of quantum cosmology, we are talking of a wave function of the universe, and that wave function is defined on a superspace that has nothing to do with, with real space-time. In fact, real space-time emerges later on uh, once the quantum to classical transition is induced. So there is a bigger space, or a, a perhaps more abstract space, rather than what we intuit would intuitively think of as space-time, in correct. which these events happen. So then you came up with quite an interesting definition of what is an event, so could you repeat that? So um, in, in, in this hope of, of generalizing the, the definition of, of uh, an event, I was thinking that um, something clearly has to happen for, for uh, us to, to record that happening as an event. So um, if we want to think of, some of an happening in, in a configuration space, or a super space, or, or an abstract space that has nothing to do with, with space-time, uh, then we can think of a variation of the state, state of the universe, for example, um, with respect to the parameter of that abstract space. So there is still something changing, something happening. It, it's this variation. And, and the state always, whether it's the wave function of the universe or, or, or the wave function of, of some other object, but, but that state always describes the being of the object, but uh, it does not describe, it can be timeless. So it, it won't tell us much about the evolution of, of that object, of that system. Once we record the variations of the state with respect to whatever abstract space we are in, then that quantifies as an event. So that's a very abstract definition, which is useful because that means that we can detach ourselves from the notions of time or even space that we don't really understand. So, and then we had, or you, somebody came up with a good example of this where time does not actually play a role, and that was the example of water freezing. Yes, so that, that, that's one example where uh, we, we can have ice and water, and, and those correspond to two different states of the same substance, of, of the liquid, of water. But they are two different states. The state themselves that, uh, do not tell us much about uh, the system, because people that are looking at ice are thinking water always has to be ice, and people that are looking at the liquid think that water always is a liquid. The variation, the, the change, the hopping from one state to another, going from, from a water form, from a liquid form to an ice form, that variation tells us that something happened to this state that induced the change. And then could we say that if we, if we manage to define what an event is without reference to time, could we then go the other way around and define time with reference to our understanding of what an event is? Probably not, because 
time seems to be one of those uh, universal fundamental building blocks of nature. Uh, we can have a variety of events, every system, every state will have many events occurring to it, but uh, they don't appear to have a unifying theme, while time is something that, that is at the very fabric of, of, uh, of nature, at, as a building, fundamental building block of nature. So uh, it, it would be hard to see how to use the concept of an event, even an abstract definition of it, in, in our advantage to define time.